Okay. So in this case, it's just your own choice. Choose anything to plug in for x. I left those empty because I don't want to tell you what's easy to plug in. Uh, and I don't want to lock you into something that's uh, not as simple as it could be. Because there are some choices for x that make life easier. Okay? What is the easiest life could be? What can you choose zero. from x? That's a great choice, right? So 0 times anything is 0. So we're subtracting nothing from 5. So when you put in 0, we get 5. You can just go right ahead and put that on the graph, too. In, in two different ways, all we've done is just kept track of this went in and this came out. Zero went in and five came out, represented in two different ways. The only thing about the graph is that that information took up just a little tiny dot of space. So that takes up a lot less space to communicate a lot of inputs and outputs. Can we choose something that is not as easy as zero, but still pretty simple? One. One is not too bad. Let's try one. Because multiplying by one is easy. One. Okay. What do we have to do now to put these together and, and ask me to answer in fraction form instead of just throwing your calculator and over one. What's that? Five over one. Make it five over one. So that we can then find common denominator. the common denominator, which is four. So we'll get twenty over four minus three over four. We get 17 over 4, and that's fine. The thing is, when I go to graph and graph this, we got 1 and 17 over 4. So that would be a little more than 4, right? 4 and 1 fourth. So when you go, it comes to graphing, it's just a little more guesswork. Can, is there a, something we can plug in for x where we can just land right on the grid, right? 4. Let's see what happens when we do 4. times 4, I'll just put 4 over 1. It's easy to see that cross-canceling. Or if you feel a little bit iffy about cross-canceling, just multiply it. You know what you'll wind up with is 12 over 4. 12 divided by 4 is 3. Right? So what do we wind up with? Just 5 minus 3. And that's 2. If we plug it 4, we get 2. So now when we go to graph that, it's right there like on a dot, right on the intersection. Grid. So 4 comma 2. Let's continue to use this idea with something else that would be really easy to plug in for x. 8. Anything that is, what's that? Divisible by, divisible by 4. Has 4 as a factor. Is a multiple of 4. Any of these things are equivalent. So let's throw 8 in there and we'll be done with that. Oh, wait. Did I do? I did. Did I get it backwards? I got it backwards. I didn't even get it back, but I did 2, 2. It should be 4, 2. 4, 2. Y equals 5 minus 3 over 4 times 8 over 1. Now we have not 3 times 1, but 3 times 2, which is fine. 5 minus something, 6, so negative 1. So we go to 8, that's right here. We get negative 1 as the output. Maybe you know that this graph, from the beginning, maybe you knew this graph was going to be a line, but pretend like you didn't. Now we see, start to see all these points being plotted. If I plotted more points, where do you think they would be? In between, in between them and all of them. Uh, and not, not only in between them, like just straight in between them, right? If I were to plot all of the points, how many points could I plot? How many uh, exist? Billions. billions and trillions and infinite. Yeah. So if I were to plot all those billions and trillions and infinite points, but I can plug in an infinite number of inputs and get an infinite number of outputs, and I plot all those points. Where all those points start to mush together and make one line, a straight line. Right? In, some, in most of the cases, you get a curve. Right? Braxton asked that question uh, like the first day of graphing: Are all graphs lines? No, they're not. A lot of them are curvy. But this one happens to be a straight line. Um,
again, I let this, the, the inputs part, up to you. You choose inputs that work really well. What's an input that works really well? Six. Why six? Because six plus three is nine. This is great. This is nine. Six plus three is nine. So you take the square root of nine, you get three, right? Thinking this way, when we look down the road and we start talking about, did you remember doing shift graphs to the left and shift graphs to the right and shift them up and shift them down? I think it, I don't know if it was presented in a way that made that make sense. But that's how we're going to do it in this class. I'm just going to remind you, take this teachable moment here, that the square root of x graph looked like that. That's from the original worksheet. This is the, the review for the <coughs> test to see how this looks similar to this. Okay, what's another one that works well? Uh, 33. Oh my gosh. 33? 33. Why 33? Because okay. 36. All right, all right. The thing is, though, let's put in 33. We do get 36. The square root is 6. What's the, what's oh, the yeah. drawback? If we have to plot it way around. I would have to, well, is it way up there? Right. It's, it's way out here. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, you want to get 6. 6 would be great for the y axis, but it turns out we have to put in such a big number for x. But that's fine, we'll leave that one. I did one. You did one, one, two. plus three four. is four, square root of four is two, that's a good oh, one. Oh. Negative three. I like that you're doing negative. Negative three plus three is zero, square root of zero is zero. We got some good points here. So we got six, one, two, three, five, six, and three. We've got uh, one, two, negative three, and two, three, and zero. Doesn't that look a lot like this one? Yes. But it's different. Bring you back. It's three. Because yeah. to, to get like zero, which you can kind of feel like is a starting point, right? Because the graph actually does stop. It stops right at zero. There's nothing over here. You can't put negative four in there, right? Why can't you put negative four into this function? What's that? It would be one. No. If I put negative four in there, it would be the square root of negative one. That's not even, that's not a real number. Square root of negative one, what would that be? What would the square root of negative one be? It would be imaginary. It is the imaginary number. This is the, like the number one of the imaginary world. The square root of negative one. Anyway. Something times something is negative. Something not, not just times something, but times itself. I'm going to number multiply by itself and get a negative number, right? It's either, pick some number. It's either positive or negative. <coughs> multiply positive times positive is positive. Negative times negative is positive. <coughs> so there is no real square root of negative one. It's imaginary. Forget about it. Don't worry about imaginary numbers right now. It's not going to be on the test for a while. Um, so we can, though, we can put some negative numbers in, right? So we can get zero when we put x in as negative three. So like the starting point is back here at negative three. Anyway, that's not important. You don't need to know anything about that for this test. Yes, yeah, so that's the, is that because there's a plus three in the function? Exactly. With a plus three, I can enter x values that are three less than normal, right? So I can start three back, and then this plus three will like, make the thing that I take the square root of you know, three more than what I put in. So I could put in smaller numbers and still have it work. Whereas I couldn't put negative numbers into this function. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so that's nine and twelve. Anything else? Twenty-two. Operations, of course, which is following the order that we've agreed to. Uh, exponents there and there, but before exponents, is parentheses. You need to work the parentheses before anything else happens. So let's talk about this one. How does this work? 
Do in the parentheses here, the uh, exponents. What is the number that I'm supposed to multiply by itself four times? Three. 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 And it's not, negative. not negative three? No. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, how would I make negative three be part of getting multiplied by itself four parentheses? Parentheses around the, the whole thing, but that's not the case. And if, you know, remember that when you when you need to replace an x with a negative number, right? And it needs to be raised to a power, especially make sure you put parentheses around it and put the negative inside the parentheses. But in this case, it's already written down. It's not in parentheses. So this is going to be negative 81 plus, we do four times nine here? That wouldn't be out of order, would it? It's okay to do, I want to assure you that it's fine to do at this point because should I make the 4 and the 9 multiply together? Well, unless something else comes first, then yeah, I should. Okay. Should I add the 4 to the 81? No, no. no, because that would be addition and that comes after the division. Should I divide the 9 by 6? No. No, why? Because what? Because what? You're right. It comes after 4 times 9. So why should I do 4 times 9 before 9 mm -hmm. divided by 6? Because you go left to right. Left to right, exactly. Multiplication, division, left to right. So we can do that. 4 times 9, that's 36. Divided by 6 times 5. Right, we've got to divide that first, so we'll just write that down. Minus 2 times, we've got to do the parentheses. Uh, should you do 2 plus 3 or 3 minus 7 first? 2 plus 3. 2 plus 3, left to right. Okay. Left to right. 2 plus 3 is minus 7. Okay, and we keep going. Why don't we do Oh, you absolutely could. Except, oh, except that there's an exponent here. <laughs> At this stage, yeah. If there wasn't a three, that's something that I, that I yeah. If there wasn't a, a third power there, if there wasn't a third power, you could, there could be your choice to distribute the negative two to the two and the three and the negative seven. But not until we do the exponents, right? Because what, it's just order of operations, right? This, uh, if we follow the order strictly, exponents come before multiplication, right? Because that's what, that's what's going on there. All right. Uh, can't add the 36 to the negative 81, so let's we'll carry that through. Well, that's okay, what can we do here? What should we do first? 36 divided by 6. That's right, the same question as before, left to right. 36 divided by 6 is 6. Multiply that by 5 here in a second. Still working on the parentheses in this step. We've got a negative 2 raised to the third power. Still negative 81, that doesn't have anything to interact with yet. 6 times 5, you can do that now. Right? Because 5 minus 2 would be the other option. That's not what we're going to do. So plus 30 minus, okay, we have 2 times whatever negative 2 to the third is. What is the number I'm trying to multiply by itself 3 times? Negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Negative 8. All right, next step. Oh, now we can put these together, right? Because we're going to add this, and this is the next thing is subtraction. So we go left to right, we'll just add negative 81 plus 30. So that's negative 51. Uh, okay, can we do negative two times negative eight? Yeah. Sure, yeah, because we're not supposed to subtract it from 30 or add it to 30 yet. Do the multiplication first. Negative two times negative eight. Plus 16. 16, 16 minus 51. 2 steps instead of 5 steps and get it correct, then great. But until you're that good, take some time, write out every step, and make it small. Like I said, take it small in two different ways. Any other questions?
Okay, so uh, Val has twice as many experience points. Let's just start with that. Val has twice as many experience points as Landon. So let's say Val is V and Landon is L. Right? So uh, it looks like I'm going to use L to figure out V, correct? So I would, what would expression would, would take L and turn it into V? 2L. 2L. So let's talk about Landon and Andrew. Landon can be found by knowing Andrew. So what would I do if I knew Andrew's experience points to find Landon? Three times A. Three times A. Three times A. Okay, so here's the thing. L is the same as 3A. So to get V, I can just take this guy, replace L, and it'd be the same thing as two times three times A. That's six A. Let's do is I, I could have written this question a little bit better. Several so people were a little confused. So we're going to say evaluate the expression for 345. So we have this expression. And we're just going to plug 345 into it. Right? That's what I did. So I should have said more like evaluate the expression for Andrew having 345 experience points. So it's clear. So plug 345 in there. We'll plug a 60. Some stuff here. Mm -hmm. Get some stuff there. And we are very importantly adding the stuff together. Mm -hmm. We don't want to mistakenly multiply the stuff. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, so let's look at this stuff. Normally we have parentheses, and inside the parentheses, like in this previous problem, no, before that one, we kind of combine things inside the parentheses until the parentheses is one number. But in this case, we have variables. And we ask ourselves, can we put these together in some way? No. Find them and you know get one term? No. No. Why not? Because the exponents are different. The exponents tell us that these guys are like in different dimensions, right? Apples and oranges. Apples and oranges. Also, let's just say I tried to um, let's say I tried to add these together somehow and get uh, like negative four, I'm just guessing because what I'm about to say doesn't make any sense. So what, what's the right way to do it, the, the wrong thing? I don't know. So if I do this, I'm gonna get negative four, maybe u to the u to the something, u to the eighth maybe you'll do, maybe u to the second. Let's look at a really simple problem. X squared plus x, mistakenly written, uh, you know, combined together to make x the third. Anytime we try to add two things that have different exponents, is something like this, how can you, you know, your friend has done this and you want to assure them that they're incorrect and you want to prove to them why they're incorrect? Show that it will be terminated in the Over here, exactly, we've got x times x times x, right? That's what x to the third means. Let's just write it out long ways, exactly what's written here. x squared is x times x. x to the first is just x, but we're adding it. When we take x cubed plus x, and, or x squared plus x and get x cubed, we're taking this guy and turning it into multiplication. No, it's addition. Can't do that. Can't do that. No. Clearly, there's there, there's no no mathematical reason why we could magically change things. There's no magic in math. Okay. So there's no way to put these together, right? Okay. So why are they in parentheses? Uh, is, is there something to distribute? No. Is there some exponent to take it to? Uh, are we dividing it by something? If you were to think of it as being distributed, what are we distributing? One. One, sure. You could distribute that one and be done with the parentheses. That's all there is that's acting on the parentheses. Nothing can happen inside the parentheses. There's just kind of no reason for the parentheses. What if there was a, what if there was a negative one? Then we would distribute that negative. negative. Yeah. And there's a, what's the number? Like a six is like that, four is like that. There's a negative on the second set of parentheses. Two to the fifth minus six u to the third. Five. And again, the same thing happens here. There is nothing, there's no like terms to combine, there's nothing to distribute except for a positive one. There's no exponent, there's no dividing. Okay. 
And what we're doing with these two parentheses is adding. So like we're not multiplying them together. So I'm just going to distribute the positive one and kind of like the parentheses disappear. These parentheses are just kind of redundant. We don't need another parentheses. There's no reason to do anything in any other order than left to right addition and subtraction. And now we can collect like terms. We have 2u to the fifth, 8u to the fifth, 10u to the fifth. And that's a third, and that's it. So we'll just do that. Take that down. We're going to make sure I get everything. u minus 6u, 5 and 7, that'll be 12. Okay. Other questions? Are we ready?